aware that very little work had been done up to now, and that the possibilities are nearly limitless. special event. I'm Clayton Callis, president of the American Chemical Society. This scientific meeting has to be a precedent-setting event of the American Chemical Society, both in attendance and in general interest. The potential benefits for all humanity of the use of controlled nuclear fission as a source of electric power have been recognized within the scientific community ever since the days of the Manhattan Project at the end of World War II. Starting with Project Sherwood in the early 1950s, the federal government and other countries have funded research that was and is hoped will lead to a method of initiating, sustaining, and controlling the fusion of deuterium and tritium nuclei. Many billion dollars have been invested in attempting to reach a net energy gain through magnetic or inertial, that is, laser or particle beam, confinement, heating, and compression of fusion fuel. This research generally involves temperatures of hundreds of millions of degrees, and in some instances, comparable pressures. While much has been learned about plasma physics, and while much progress has been made, the goal has remained elusive, and the large, complicated machines that are involved appear to be too expensive and too inefficient to lead to practical power. Now it appears the chemists may have come to the rescue. <laughs> I first learned about cold fusion when I read of Dr. Pond's work in the Wall Street Journal on March 24th. 
The next day, I discussed it with Board Chairman Ernie Elio, and we agreed it would be a good idea to see if Dr. Pons would be willing to address this ACS meeting. In the meantime, Valerie Cook, Chairman of Meetings and Expositions, was already checking into the possibility of such a program. As President, I author authorized her to proceed. And this session is the result of her efforts and arrangements. Of course, you wouldn't be here unless you share this excitement and sense the potentially profound implications of what we, we may already have heard. When in 1980, Congressman Mike McCormick introduced what was to become the landmark fusion law that bears his name, he stated, and I quote, the practical development of nuclear fusion power will be the most important energy-related event in human history since the first controlled use of fire, end of quote. Today, we are discussing what may be the first step of that development. And I'm proud that this is happening at the American Chemical Society meeting, and that once again, a chemist is reporting on the results of his work, which may be a great service to all mankind. I will now call on Valerie Cook, the organizer of this program, who will emcee the program and introduce the speakers. Good afternoon. I would like to welcome you all to an event which celebrates the excitement of chemistry on the forefront of science. Before we start, I would like to thank ACS President Clayton Callis, whose foresight allowed the presentation of this late-breaking work as part of this meeting. Not wanting to disrupt the regular programming, our format will consist of prepared presentations by each of the speakers. The meeting will be adjourned by 2 p.m. to allow those who desire to attend regularly scheduled sessions to, have, to leave the room. After a few minutes, we will reconvene and the pre presenters will then answer questions until about 3.15. From those on the main floor only, the questions will come. At 3.15, we will conclude. Members of the press, are requested to refrain from asking questions. <laughs> 